Hi, this is Ashish Ad Bedekar and welcome to my podcast the ARB show. I'm thrilled to introduce today's guest Kostub. This is a special episode for more reasons than one. He is my maternal uncle. I was in two minds whether to invite him to the show, but his expertise and his overall personality is too valuable to be limited to our family only. Hence I've made the exception to my rule, which is no family on my podcast show. Uh, Kostub is advisor at Godrej and Boys, part of the prestigious Indian conglomerate Godrej. He was heading the industrial products division of Godrej and Boys in the capacity of chief operating officer from 2002 till uh, 2021. He joined Godrej and Boys in 1987 and has over 29 years of experience across various functions: sales, marketing, production, systems. personal and as business head he is a master of management studies in marketing from jamnalal bajaj institute of management studies also called as jbims and he is a graduate in engineering mechanical engineering from nit arur kela he has been active in several industry associations and has served on several industry bodies like indian nuclear society national defense committee of the cii Aeronautical Subcommittee of National Defence Committee of CII, uh, then the Indian Atomic Industries Forum, and uh, he is a board member of TPM Club of India under the CII. Over to you, Kostub. As discussed, I would like to have a format in which the guest talks about top five tips in a uh, specific domain of their expertise. But maybe you can just give a quick uh, recap as to why you selected the topic of your choice, which is. i think you're uh, calling it top 5 most underrated skills uh, and as you, as always you know look forward to uh, in fact sharing this wisdom uh, with a wider audience and not limiting it only to the family over to you thanks ashish uh, good to be on your podcast and uh, i've watched uh, your uh, podcast series and i think you're doing a good job so congratulations keep it up and it's an honor and privilege to be on your podcast and uh, so uh, you know when you asked me to speak on a podcast i was reluctant obviously because you know uh, off late there is so much uh, information being bombarded uh, on on all possible media that uh, there is i think enough and more of uh, of knowledge so to say and i think we need uh, we don't need so much really you know to be focused and be successful on the job and therefore i'm generally reticent when people ask for advice uh you know you know i said what is that you want to know uh you know and i'll just share with you uh, you know as i was superannuating i too was asked uh, by my company to you know to speak on the topic i like <laughs> I, i said i don't want to do it because i think it's it's not the question about what i like to speak about but what would be relevant to people uh, you know finally one must speak and therefore you know i have therefore chosen not to to give uh, you know advice so to say uh, but only restrict to answering queries on uh, on how uh, and you know once again that's not an advice given a situation how would i deal with the situation you know that may not be the best possible answer but it certainly is um is one possible way of uh, dealing with the situation and you know i wouldn't mind sharing that with you so when you asked uh, you know to speak on a topic that i like i said i don't want to speak because uh, you know what is there for me to to add to the already you know an ocean of knowledge that we have but then you know uh, on your egging i think then i thought that i could speak about uh, five most underrated things Uh, and uh, you know why it came to my mind is you know when when one is working in teams in a corporation in a small team large team whatever you expect uh, you know a certain level of commitment uh, a certain level of uh, you know doing things and so on and so forth and then you find that uh, if those smallest of the building blocks aren't there Uh, then you really uh, you know you then you have a challenge and therefore i thought that you, we could speak about five most uh, underrated uh, you know things which are very simple uh, i mean there is no new found knowledge in it uh, you know all all of this is obviously known to people everything uh, i have realized that despite uh, people knowing it too well uh, 
you know it's 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 a challenge you know as they say common sense is hard is not so common and you know i find that these so called skills i would say uh, or uh, you know uh, aptitude or attitude or whatever that you may call uh, are are something very basic but yet uh, you know i have found in in you know in my 34 years of working that uh, you know not everybody exhibits it to the level that you want and therefore i thought you know we could speak about um, you know these underrated things that if done well they would create a great sense of comfort within the team and for the team leader and therefore hence this was the topic that i suggested right in fact i read somewhere that whatever i uh, needed to know in my business life i already le- learned it in kindergarten so it's yes it's, you know most and of that's the not profound, wrong yeah. yeah and most of the profound truths or most of the profound principles of life are learned early on so what you said is very true so maybe yeah. let's start with the first uh, first tip or the first skill which you would like to highlight yeah, and as you said you know uh, uh, we learn these skills early on the question is do we live them and uh, you know that is a question uh, more often uh, and that is a challenge that uh, that i find anyway so when you know when i was trying to gather thoughts uh, on these subjects then i realized that you know uh, choosing for top 5 to restrict to your uh, <laughs> you know your format may be a challenge and you know then i sort of kept on adding so i think i've done a uh, done a trick so i've sort of taken some uh you know words phrases or you know things that uh, whatever you may call and sort of group them together and uh, and you know some of them are reflection of my own career uh you know not you know people see uh, the end career that one has achieved and uh, may think that it has you know all been hunky dory uh, it's never so i think all all careers all career paths all jobs have challenges and how well do you fulfill them how consistently uh, with perseverance you fulfill them is uh, is that count and uh, you know therefore these uh, and you know these are not necessarily in order of uh, you know priority you know, the, you know the, there is no pecking order to it first i thought was uh, you know uh, not one but you know having an attitude of gratitude or uh, value the opportunity being presented uh and hence be committed to it uh, f- focus it focus on it and show enthusiasm so i think i thought these are all related and uh, if i could just uh, sort of uh, you know call them out again attitude of gratitude valuing opportunity that has been presented being committed to that opportunity or the job on hand and uh, focusing and showing enthusiasm and you know these is very very underrated i would say uh and i have seen n number of examples you know whether it's in school uh, uh, you know uh, the school that we have attended uh, you know one may complain that okay it doesn't have this and this or you know it, i wish it had a greater you know a bigger sports field or you know i wish it had uh, a badminton court or a basketball court but i think rather than look at what it doesn't have Uh, we must focus on the opportunity that is available so the school that is available uh, we must have an attitude of gratitude and i find that uh, with that and you know when it comes to job you know uh, post engineering or post mba or even uh, during the jobs or you know uh, even when you're working you get you uh, you uh, you know you choose an industry now uh, uh, it may be to your liking it may not be to your liking but if an opportunity has been presented to you i think it's it it's a good uh, approach to uh, to give your best to the opportunity uh, provided do it with an attitude of gratitude and you know there are any number of uh, uh, you know for example when people look for promotion promotions obviously they look at performance but then there is a new thing called potential you know so we must um, you know promote people as per their potential but then the question is what is the best measure of potential often it's the performance on the on the current job and therefore uh, you know committing yourself to the job on hand to the opportunity available and doing and excelling there is uh, you know is a great thing uh, you know normally when there when people join organizations they get uh, assigned to a division or a department or a, or a boss you know you may like it you may not like it you you get deputed to a location 
uh, and you know you may like it or not like it but i uh, you know i think uh, rather than focusing on what did you not get the the choice posting or the choice department uh, if one focused on how good uh, can you do the job on hand uh, show enthusiasm there you know focus on the job on hand uh, i think it uh, it would make life uh, uh, you know easy and more yeah. satisfying and uh, you know even for the team leaders uh, if you exhibit this behavior i think there is a greater comfort and finally we must remember that you know as individuals we are just uh, you know one cog in the wheel and um, and if we really rise to the occasion and perform well i think the team performs well and nothing would satisfy a team or a team leader to know that you have people like that so i would say uh, one of the first you know most underrated things is to uh, to focus on the opportunity on hand the show enthusiasm passion Uh, and really value that opportunity with an attitude of gratitude i would say this right right so it also uh, you know uh, many people say that it's it's uh, what, what essentially you have said is live live in the moment because as humans there is always a gap between uh, what could have been and where yeah. you are so there's Absolutely. the that gap leads to regret and uh, where you are versus what can happen in the future right that gap kind of leads to anxiety so you know having uh, it's like uh, you know having uh, your feet in two boats going in different direction so you know you won't do your job uh, at present on the right so very well said so what would be the second uh, uh, kind of tip or second advice you would like to give yeah, i think this is uh, you know oft repeated and uh, you know there is nothing original about it but uh, you know showing up every day and showing perseverance uh i'm sure and you know uh, i i can speak from my own experience uh, uh you know the the job profile at times can be very challenging uh the the challenges could be external to to us uh, if the challenges are within the organization or within your team uh, you can work to to you know work on you know build on it but if you are Uh, when the challenges are external and where you have no influence uh, uh, you have a challenge and therefore i can say from uh, you know from my long years of experience working with uh, sectors where the control used to be uh, outside us uh, showing up every day perseverance is most important you, you you know we have to deal with people who may not be reasonable uh, uh, not to say they are adversarial but uh, you know i mean they may have their own uh, uh, you know their own uh, attitude or you know whatever uh, particularly when you're dealing with government uh, you know they have this you know nagging fear of how uh, how to be procedurally correct and so on and so forth and i think this is where uh, i think perseverance really counts we are I'm showing up and you know ideally uh, when we when we have a, a list of things to do we obviously want to check them out um, you know as soon as things get done and you know when things remain on your things to do list uh, you know it it, it causes stress and uh, in 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 a situation like that to take it up and you know once again go to the job the next day uh, with enthusiasm is what counts and i think but i have seen it myself uh that perseverance space uh, there is absolutely no doubt uh and particularly when and, and when you are a team member i think uh, perseverance and showing up every day gives great confidence to the team and the team leader but as a team leader if you really demonstrate perseverance uh, i think the, you know the entire team gets energized so i would Perfect. certainly say uh, you know having perseverance and you know showing up every day Um, against all adversity uh, adversities to show up and you know say stand up and that we shall we shall overcome i think this is a, a second i would say the second underrated trait right, uh, right. so in fact uh, you know I, i was i read a nice quote somewhere it says that uh, success is uh, i think 80% of showing up you know as as you rightly mentioned yeah. and uh, that uh, Uh, you know if you just step back and look at many of the initiatives or many of the stuff which you try to achieve uh, i think that thread is common in anything any human endeavor you do you know if you even take a, as simple as say fitness uh, you know getting up in the morning and uh, going yeah. for a jog or the run <laughs> even yes. when it's, it's more comfortable to you know sleep in bed 
to uh, even in sales uh, because even in sales they, uh, you know it's it's uh, quite a common experience that you know unless you kind of follow up uh, and maybe you try and get a breakthrough after the 8th or the 10th contact uh, with yes. the, the prospect so yes, you know, yes. underlying thread is persistence and perseverance so, so that's that's well said uh, let's move to the third uh, third underrated skill uh i third underrated skill i would say is uh, you know valuing time uh, our own as well as others and uh, you know i will expand on it further obviously this means that showing up on time uh, uh, you know when you commit to do a certain thing uh, you must visualize immediately how uh, you know how are you going to be able to do that and uh, if you are not going to be able to do it uh, you must uh inform in advance that that you are having a problem and i think therefore showing up on meeting uh, only only yesterday uh, a friend of mine who is presently in the us uh, heading a you know large chemical company there as a chief uh, you know executive uh, he was in india you know he was conducting a, a workshop of his people and you know he said that uh, the workshop was to start at 9 and uh, and then you know people uh, sort of kept trickling in till about 9 10 or 9 15 he said this doesn't happen in the us and uh, very rightly so any professional organization why professional organization just you, know, you look at your daily uh, utilities uh, the newspaper uh, uh, delivery person the uh, the milk delivery if he doesn't follow a set routine uh, the garbage collector if it doesn't follow a set routine you know you, you would be most upset now if you can expect this from uh, services like this why wouldn't you do it yourself so therefore showing up on time uh, you know if you have sort of given uh, if there is a meeting uh, uh, you must uh, you know honor the time and the meeting must start at 9 i mean if the if the meeting time is 9 you must start at 9 it's not that Nine o'clock onwards, then uh, people start, um, uh, you know, coming and gathering and you know, setting in the motion. That that doesn't happen. Right. So I think valuing time, yours as well as others. Um, you know, we used to have a rule in our organization because you know sometimes project reviews are important and they take longer. And you may have customer commitments um, in the interim. So we also said that never keep a customer waiting. uh i have walked into some of the financial services you know mutual fund or insurance companies um, offices in the morning uh, taking half day leave and you know uh, going to the office at 10 to find that there is a you know stand up meeting going on and the customer can wait for about 30 40 minutes it's not it's not correct so valuing your time in the sense uh, if uh, if the stand up meetings were required if the huddles were required they must get done before the time that you open the doors to the customers you cannot have customers uh, you know waiting so i think this is another approach that valuing your own time important so don't let others uh, spoil it at the same time ensure that you care for the others got time got it so uh, focusing on value addition uh, you know yes. focusing on value addition so let the meetings also be focused uh, if you are not adding uh, you know uh, you know i'm i'm not a big fan of of weekly meetings or periodic meetings and all that you must meet as often as you need but you meet only when you need and uh, you know not because it's a ritual uh, so that's another way i would say is uh, you know valuing time and if you see things are not getting done uh, you know within a time period and if you ca- if you indeed know how it can be uh, you know managed i think you should chip in so valuing time your own your teammates the organizations your customers i think this i would say is is an underrated skill and i have found that uh, you know when one begins to really appreciate time and you know and, and be devotional uh, uh, devoted to it uh, i have seen attitudes change you know whether it's customers difficult customers or, or whatever i think things improve got it so in fact uh, you know as as uh, it is often said that if there's a meeting uh, which has 10 people and if you are 5 minutes late you have wasted 50 minutes right? yeah, absolutely yeah <laughs> so so that's that's very crucial also you know it's important to note specifically in a international setting the cultu- cultural nuances and the cultural uh, aspects related with time right for example in japanese uh, context if you are meeting is supposed to start at 4 uh, everyone is there at least 10 minutes before 
and the initial 10 minutes are used for uh, breaking the ice and catching Absolutely. up things like that yeah. and and meeting start uh, on time you know uh, because uh, yeah, because you know we have to uh, as business leaders and as professionals we have to uh, you know uh, raise the standards to very high levels so you know when you raise your standards of course your output will also increase and also i think it's a point of uh, it's often said that uh, the very small uh, so-called insignificant or small items really have a profound effect right because even if uh, specific teams within the organization are always on time or give a predictable uh, output that is also a point of cultural change right because then people expect that oh this is a a team you know if you tell them something at uh, they would uh, you know kind of beat the deadline and if they say that uh, something is to start at this point and they would do that. So that's, I think, another yeah. aspect of that. Excellent. Uh, moving on to the next uh, underrated skill. See, I, I have been a big fan of, uh, of Japanese management techniques, whether it is TQM, TPM, Kaizen's or, you know, PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Act. And uh, I, I would once again feel, you know, Plan, Do, Check, Act, we often... Uh, uh, you know, don't visualize or realize the full potential of PDCA or Kaizen's. So, you know, making, uh, you know, doing planning to do a thing, actually doing it, checking how well have you performed. And if you find that it is not, uh, the outcomes were not reached, visualizing what could be the reason and, and overcoming them. And, uh, you know, this PDCA actually keeps you in a perpetual virtuous cycle. So, uh, you know, then sky is the limit. Virtually, you can improve every process um, anytime, uh, as many times as possible. And I think this also is good because sometimes, you know, uh, I've heard people uh, feel stale in the job. They don't, uh, you know, like, into, you know, they don't like going to the job. But if, if uh, we, we really adapted this PDCA, uh, you know, it could, it would certainly, you know, improve the job, enthusiasm to a job. Uh, I'll tell you a story about, I, I read somewhere that, uh, you know, Toyota uh, did not, did not had a vision of making better cars. They had a vision of making the process of making cars better. And therefore, you know, they could always keep on improving and so on and so forth. So I think PDCA, I would say, uh, and, you know, then your datum could be anything based on your, uh, PDCA could be in your career, PDCA could be in your your educational achievements. You, it could be anywhere, but if you are committed to it and, you know, you keep on improving, uh, you can really build on uh, on whatever background that you have and achieve great success. Right, and, and on that note, you know, all of us also appreciate that even in your personal life, you are as <laughs> as skilled and proficient in use of checklist and to-do list as I'm sure in oh, your yeah. self work. So, so that is yeah, yeah. So that is something yeah. to to emulate. Yeah. So let's come to the last uh, underrated skill. So what's what's the, the 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 fifth and most maybe probably the most important underrated skill in your view? Yeah. Okay, so you know, once again, uh, I'm sure you have heard. Uh, have, obviously, you have heard. Uh, you have done a podcast on uh, theory of constraints. So, uh, I think focusing on system constraints is, uh, you know, when we often get uh, flabbergasted with, uh, you know, not being able to uh, to move the needle. I think it, it is important to figure out what is that one system constraint or the one bottleneck that is holding us back and you know applying all our attention even in tpm for example you know rather than uh, do kaizans on any and everything you should focus your kaizen on on the uh, on the bottleneck on uh, the thing that is hurting us most and uh, this is in a way is to also be outcome oriented now don't get me wrong uh, I'm not saying that one doesn't have to be process oriented. Obviously, one has to be process oriented. But if your so-called process is not delivering the outcomes, it must be tweaked. And therefore, uh, uh, what I just said earlier, it's probably similar to PDCA. But, you know, focusing on what is holding 
you or the system or the team back from you know not being achieving it and um, and creatively finding out solutions to overcome that uh, would be would be very meaningful and uh, you know if you if you are attacking the system constraints the the benefits are huge and rather than then you know sort of be defocused or uh, you know spend energy on things which are not relevant i mean which of course uh, if improved would help in lowering cost somewhere and all that but the benefit that you would get by focusing by being outcome oriented and thus focusing on the system constraints or the bottlenecks uh, would be great so uh, another underrated uh, uh, you know approach you may say management approach to be laser focused on on what is holding us back and then improving it great i think this really gives a, a great perspective and it's a i would say a distilled uh, you know wisdom of your experience and i'm sure it will be very uh, valuable for the audience thanks you once again i hope so <laughs> and, and it looks like yeah it looks yes. like another long lecture on morals as you said no, 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 no that's it. the kind of and, stuff and, that uh, one has read uh, in early childhood and so on and so on and you know if i were to simply the uh, taking on uh, from what you said uh i think you cannot be a good team member or a team leader unless you are a good human being and uh, and therefore you know everything that i have said earlier uh, you know whether uh, you know uh, valuing the opportunity uh, showing perseverance and um, you know uh, valuing time and plan do check act even depends even is applicable on our own self uh, how good a human being are you uh, is important and uh, all you know physical metaphysical spiritual emotional all aspects if you if you can be a better version of yourself uh, you know tomorrow then then you are of today and and if you are on a perpetual path i think you would obviously be a good team uh, uh, member and uh, a good team leader great thanks thanks again and thank you dear listeners for tuning in do subscribe share and like this podcast available on spotify apple and other channels Bye for now talk to you soon